Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Catholic Truth Podcast, where we teach and preach the truth that comes down over 2,000 years from Jesus and the apostles. We want to help you to know your faith, love your faith, live your faith with purpose and passion, and even be able to defend it and be set on fire for it. Today, we have a wonderful uh, show with a guest who was on here below uh, before who had an incredible mind-blowing testimony uh, about how Jesus changed his life from the most crazy things you can imagine. I mean, homelessness and um, bad things all across the board, prison and more. And he ended up converting to the Catholic Church. It changed his life. Jesus changed his life. And he's back with us today to talk about hardcore Catholic spirituality and how to follow Christ. So his name is Eric Tafoya, and we welcome him back to the show. Welcome, Eric. Hey man, hey, thank you, thank you for having me now, man. It's it has been a year, and I thank you for bringing me back to show that you know God gives all of us talents. God gives all of us gifts. He's already given us the major gift of dying for us on the cross, and now He's given us other gifts so that we can live in victory while He's in heaven, while we're preparing ourselves down this road. And that's that's what I believe has been my success because you you interviewed me when I had been out about I think two and a half years. So I've been out three and a half years now, so I'm no longer on parole, praise God. And now my major objective is to share the faith. If I knew where somebody was giving away a million dollars, I swear, Brian, I would yell it from the rooftops and I would tell everybody because it's a million dollars. But what we have in Catholicism, the true deposit of faith is priceless. So God has me on this mission going and telling everybody who will listen. Those who don't listen, we dust off our feet. Those who will listen and want to live in victory, hey. The church has this formula for us to live in victory, to always be champion, overcoming any obstacle, depression, hate, anything that's in lingering in our lives. We can live in succession by what? Using the instruments and weapons of the church. And that's what I'm here to share with you today. Amen. And if you guys haven't gone to listen to his testimony yet, crazy stuff. St. Paul style conversion. Paul got nothing on this guy. And so I'm going to link that below in the description section yeah. and at the end as well. Um, and I, I, I would also point you to his YouTube channel, which is Traditional Urban Catholic Christian. And you can check that out. He's making a lot of videos. So anyways, today he's going to be talking about cross-training uh, not for your body, but for your soul and hardcore spiritual training and how we can follow Christ. Tell us, what does that even mean? What is cross training to you? Let me first ask that question. <laughs> well, for me, it's, it's, I guess it's, if you think about cross training in the gym, you don't just lift weights, you know, you don't just swim, you don't just run, you, you do everything to try to yeah. train every different part of your body for maximum training. And I would imagine that goes with the spiritual life as well. You know, you don't just say the pray, go to mass. You don't just say the rosary. Yeah. We also have to do spiritual reading. We have to do meditation yeah. and listening to Christ. We have to talk to him. It's, it's not yeah. just one thing or another. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Amen. I, I love how you said that. That's it's, it's, it's truly what I'm saying. And it's just like, it takes me back to a story. Cause I like to, I want to like give a, 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 a little um, instra, uh, a demonstration of what it is. So I have a buddy, like I was telling you the other day, he's cut up. Like he's really like, I don't even want to take up my shirt next to him. Cause you know, I'm a little pudgy, but I work out my entire body. I do the jogging. I do the running a little bit of biceps back. I may not do his workout as much as he does, but the problem with him is that from his hip up, man, he's like a god. Six-pack, chest, shoulders, but the problem with him is, is he doesn't work out his legs ever. And so that leads me to a, an event that we had. This was a few months back where I asked him to go on a run with me. And I was like, hey, come on, bro. You want to go hiking, Claremont Loop? He's like, yeah, bro, let's do it. So we go running, immediately takes off his shirt, puts his bandana on. He gets kind of long. <laughs> He kind of got some long hair, too. So you're like, hey, praise God. He's a Protestant, too. And so this is what's cool about this. He's an ex-Catholic turned Protestant. And so then we go on the run. <laughs> We're running up the hill because we didn't go the easy way because there's one way to go five miles one way. The easy way, then you got the rough route. I like to call that the Catholic route. And so we went up the, we went up the steep hill, not even a half a mile up into this mountain. He falls dead on his face and he's like cramping up. He's falling apart. And really his legs, his ankles are the same as his legs. It seems like just really skinny, even though he's real big up top. It looks funny being disproportionate like that, you know, but the reason why I told him it's because you don't practice, you don't work out your legs. You're never working out your legs. And I said, do you want to know something else, bro? You're always complaining. 
you're always negative. You're always looking at the cup being half empty and you never see miracles happening in your life. I told you, you want to know why? Because you're not living out the full deposit of faith. And with Catholics out there, too, I'm talking to you guys out there because that's my Protestant buddy. Remember, he was a Catholic. He's baptized Catholic. So he has it in. So I had to explain to him. You don't have a rosary. You don't have the Eucharist. You don't have Mama Mary. You don't have the saints. You don't understand the true understanding of the scriptures because you go based upon anybody reading the Bible. Well, we have the church fathers. We have the deposit of faith that teaches us what the scriptures mean on top of our evangelization. We've been doing it for 2000 years. And this is the church that Jesus founded. So he hears that now Catholics out there. I'm talking to you because a lot of times I see Catholics. They go to mass all the time. They're, they're, in, they're in mass all the time. And praise God because the Eucharist is the, the source and summit of our faith. But I also noticed that they don't pray the rosary. They're not involved in ministry and they're very stagnant. They're, they don't they seem to be upset all the time when you say hi to them. Some of them, hey, they're cool. But the ones that I usually see on fire the most all the time since I've been on the faith are the ones who are actually living out the faith. Because when we live out our faith, it activates it. And that's what leads me to cross training. OK, so when we're talking about a physical cross training right now where you're working every part of your body, correct? Well, in this cross training. I have this demonstration where I have the cross. Can you guys see it right here? Or yep. the cross behind me. I have the crucifix right behind me. We're going to use that as an example. And I believe if you do every single part of this cross, with which I'm going to explain to you, you're going to be able to live in victory. You're no longer going to be doubting. You're going to have full trust in God. You're going to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Because if we're only living out part of our faith, then we're only understanding how much God has for us. But when we entrench ourselves with the top part of the cross, the bottom part of the cross, the left side of the cross, and the right side of the cross, I'm gonna, which I'm going to explain to you what it is right now. So on the top side of the cross, I'm going to name all four of them off so you guys can hear them first. The top side of the cross is having a relationship with Jesus, understanding that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. On the bottom part of the cross, I'm going to be talking about having a devotion to Mama Mary and to pray a prayer rosary, which is my 60 millimeter cannon. On the left side of the cross, I'm going to go into it and, and explain reading the Bible every day because it's a Catholic book. It edifies you. It builds you up. It's the word of God speaking to you. Also on that same side of the cross, it's knowing your doctrine and being excited about who you are as a Catholic, building this Catholic culture and identity around you and your family, the more you know your doctrine, the more that we are in our faith, when the enemy tries to attack you, we can slap him down. Why? Because Christ is our king and he's our fortress, but it's learning your faith. And then the right side of the cross, it's evangelization, which we have been doing for years. And Second Vatican Council has declared for us all to be evangelists in our own form. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. And on top of that is fellowship. Sorry about that. On the right side also is fellowship. The way we get to know God, the way we get to know his people more is we intermingle with them. We talk to them. And so like Brian was saying, do you have anything to say right now, Brian? Or you mind if I nope. continue? You just can't. Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. So like Brian was saying, I was released three years ago. And I just want to tell you by practicing these things right now, I've been able to live in victory. The church has already been doing it. 2,000 years of rich history. So the only reason why I say that is because I just got out of prison three and a half years ago. But I've been practicing my faith so that God could take my life to a whole nother level because I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I'm a nobody just trying to tell everybody all about somebody that saved my soul. The more that we practice our faith and know about Christ and our faith, the more that we're going to live in victory always. And the world will no longer have its hold on us. Those temptations will be able to push it away quick. Try and evangelize to our family members that are going through hurt. When we live our faith out fully, we become the best commander of our family, the best priest of our family, the best prophet of our family, the best king of our family. And that's what I want. Or queen, if you're out there, two women. I want you guys to live in victory. I care about your souls. It's more than saying I'm Catholic. Everybody. It's about forming a Catholic culture and identity. This we live out every single day. This is the art, I like to say, of Catholic warfare. I have a motto that I said earlier, that the more that we practice our faith, the more that we live it out. When the enemy tries to attack us, we can defeat him in a blink of an eye, the more you're living out our faith. He is easily defeated. How do we defeat obstacles and how do we overcome obstacles in our life? Cross training. 
This is how we're going to do it like this. The top part of the cross, it's one thing that I, you know what, I, I don't hear a lot. And so I try to really push it. Can you preach? Can you say it with me right now, Brian? Jesus. 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 <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. The demons, the devil runs and flees. We know this. Man, what happened to Legion? He couldn't even stay in the pigs. When he saw Jesus, he ran and flee. And he had been in that man for a long time. The top part of the cross we're going to be talking about is having a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who left his heavenly kingdom, came down to earth, became a baby. We just celebrated Christmas. But you can't have Christmas without the crucifixion and the resurrection because that was his mission. That's why he left heaven, came down to earth to die for us. Plain and simple. So when you think about Christmas, please don't think about gifts. Think about Jesus dying on the cross for your salvation. It's a big thing. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way you get to the Father is through the Son. Having a relationship with the Holy Trinity is pivotal in our lives. Calling out to them, talking to them at all times, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But right now, we're targeting, we're targeting the King right now. So we're going to be talking about Jesus. He says, ask anything in my name. And I will do for you if you love me, you will keep my commandments. When's the last time you've looked through those commandments? Please take a look at them. He says it over and over again. If you love me, follow my commandments. So please go check out the Ten Commandments. They're beautiful. They help us to grow. They edify us. We look at them every time that we do a um, examination of the conscience before we go into confession, so we can be in a state of grace. Well, I'm saying read them every single day. And if you can get a portrait of it and put it on your wall, I have them to the left over here. Put it on there and remind it because it's pivotal. It's brought up at least 20 times the commandments and salvation in the New Testament. So Jesus is present in the Eucharist. You agree with me over there, Brian? Yes, I do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm just trying to sorry. I can, you know, I can get long-winded like yourself. So I'm just trying to include you if you want to say anything also, brother. No, I appreciate it. Um, okay. No, so far we have relationship with Christ in the Trinity, following him, talking to him, having that relationship with him every day. Not just, yeah. I mean, I know people who are good Catholics. They're Eucharistic yeah. ministers. They are yeah. youth ministers. They're directors of religious education. Priests who don't pray. They don't have a good prayer life because why? They're too busy. Oh, well, this is my prayer. No, it's not. Doing stuff for God does not replace your relationship with God, and it doesn't yeah. please God. Yeah. If you don't have a relationship with God, those yeah. other things are good too. And we can offer them up as a prayer. But the first thing is a deep prayer life, not a few minutes before bed, not a Hail Mary, yeah. not an Our yeah. Father, a good, deep relationship. You don't have that. How are you even going to get to heaven? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I like to say, I like how you said that. I like to say that the more that we talk to Christ, like even one time when I was trying to train myself when I came out to the streets, I wanted to train myself to pray. So I set my alarm all day long because when you're in there, you, you don't got much to do. But when you're out here, it's like nonstop. So every hour, I would just want to do a prayer and talk to him. So I was like in conversation with him almost the whole day. And then, of course, I'd have a longer conversation with him at the end of the day. But I think that's extremely important, you know, and understanding about a lot. of I, We are Eucharistic evangelists. Anybody out there, the 28 percent of the church that believes that Jesus is present in body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Eucharist. It is your mission. It is your obligation. It is your duty to share it with our brothers and sisters and to be an example that that is Jesus in the Eucharist. We're not just taking a wafer. It's not just a cracker. That's not just wine. It is Christ. What does Christ say in John 6, 53? He says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in him. But if you don't eat his flesh, you don't drink his blood. He says you don't have life in you. That's what the Eucharist is. So if you're going up there not believing that that's the Eucharist, I worry about your soul. We worry about you because you have to believe. That's fundamental. That's, didn't you notice that when Jesus did miracles for people, it was by their faith. It was fundamental to that. Eat my flesh because what does he say? It's real drink. It's real food in John 55. The, and I believe all, from the bottom of my heart, the more that you take Jesus and you believe that what you're taking is the body, blood, soul, and divinity, I am taking Jesus. Think about it. The more I receive of Jesus, 
the more I become, the more I'm less like me, the more I'm more like him. Those efficacious graces, those powerful graces being pounded into your soul right there. That those loving juices just flowing all through you. Those graces, that's what happens every time you go to mass. Believe that it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity. And go to adoration. I, I live by example. I was just there today. Go to adoration and spend some time with your king. Like Brian was saying, talk to him. Go to adoration. Send some weekly. time. Weekly. Just yeah. Weekly. No, no. Weekly. It's a must. It's not like, okay, I think I'm gonna and Matt, and if you can go to mass more than once a week, go as much as you can, please. It'll help you get stronger and stronger. And you know what? Participate in the mass. It's important. I'm adding some extra stuff right here. But when you're in the mass, that's that's your mass. You're a part of it. Participate. You you belong there. God's brought you there for a reason. And you've been blessed to be a part of our community and be able to receive the Eucharist for those of you out there that are Catholics. And I know when I do retreats, I always ask, I always ask their parents or kids, whoever I'm speaking to, I say, the Lord be with you. And they say, with your spirit. I said, lift up your hearts. They say, we lift them up to the Lord. I said, do you? And they look at me and they mm. say, what? I said, did you? They said, did I what? I said, did you lift up your heart to the Lord or did you just say it? A lot of times we just say the prayers, but we don't yeah. pray the prayers. If you start praying those prayers deeply and meaning every word, that's when the mass changes your life. Otherwise, it's boring. You're just saying it, not praying it. Yeah. Yeah. You, I like how you said that. You usually see the ones that are acting like they're bored, like they're not getting out of nothing. Out of it. They're not listening. They're not participating. Even if they don't know, they're not reading through the through the little books so they can understand what's going on in it. They're not trying to learn. And that's why I'm saying we have to make sure that we're being good examples for those men and women that are out there and sharing what we're doing in mass with other people that are around us. Uh, be that example. It's important because Jesus died on the cross. So now what the, what's the top part of the cross we were talking about? Relationship with Christ. It's having a relationship with Jesus because he's like we were saying, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Like really foundational. Yeah, core. please. Like I think some people like they I don't know why sometimes they get on me, but like I really I want to push this. I really want to push the fact that Christ is everything. If we don't have that core relationship with him, it's easy for us to fall. It's easy for us to stumble, you know? And so yeah, Jesus. Let's get to the next <laughs> point. The, the top of the cross. No, because we need him. They, if, the demons didn't run from nobody else when he was on earth except for him. I need people to understand that from the bottom of their heart. You can praise God. We got all the instruments. We got the next part I'm going to talk about, but we have all these other individuals, these saints that are in heaven with us, Mama Mary. But know this the King of Kings, the one who everyone flees when he comes around, he got your back. He got your, you can, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't forget, he's off that, he's off that cross. He's living up there champion status and when he sees you standing up for him he's up there standing up on the right hand of the father like it says in um acts um when stephen gets a uh, martyr i believe that's Acts seven end of Acts seven or beginning of Acts eight stephen gets martyred and it says that he looks up and he sees jesus christ standing in the authority the power of god at the right hand of god you know we want to be going out like that when Jesus sees you acknowledging him, trust me, he's going to acknowledge you. He says, acknowledge me publicly. I'm going to acknowledge you publicly. But if you don't acknowledge him publicly, trust and believe that he ain't going to disrespect himself, but you're not going to get acknowledged either. He wants the That's why that it annoys me. Loving him. That's why it I annoys me with the high heavens and priests are always like, okay, let's pray with all the angels and saints. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I'm like, stop, stop, start over. That's what I want to say to them. Stop saying it. We're talking about all the angels and all the saints and all of the heavenly hosts it's falling down on their faces saying, yeah, holy, yeah. holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I mean, we need to pray those words yeah, deeply. Yeah, when yeah, we yeah. do, Amen. Amen. that's when we worship. That's when our hearts yeah. change. That's when Christ raises us to himself, not just saying the prayers, but praying them. And that all comes from having a good, deep prayer life and not just yeah. going through the motions. Yeah. Amen. No, that's beautiful, Brian. No, yeah, that's right. You know participate that's that's big so, and, and yeah okay, go for it i don't want to like beat a dead horse but let's get to mary and the saints because yeah no no, on okay. in the show. no no for certain second point right here we're going to get into right now um who was that let me ask this question who's at the foot of the cross uh let me think john saint john and mary amen mary, Mag so john mary magdalene was, john was who the one that jesus loved right who's the one that jesus loved john 
Who is that though? See, so church teaches that we're all the one that Jesus loves. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Right. He loves everybody. We know. So we know that John is a representation of all of us. It's a representation of us. So when when he says, "Son, behold your behold your mother," he is giving his mother to the one that he loves. We're all the one that he loves, and we know that Mama Mary is our mother too. So the bottom of the cross I talked about is we're the ones that he loved, and we're the ones he loves, but the one at the foot also was the one he truly loves above all is his mother. And so having a devotion to Mama Mary and also praying your 60 millimeter cannon, which I call, which is my rosary. Women, I love the way you guys have been doing. You guys set the tone for us. But men, this is a masculine instrument. If you need to get a rugged rosary, huh. a rosary you know, or oh. with a pair or I break rosaries all the time. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a rosary breaker. I get the pair. No, I'm not pair. laughing at you. I'm laughing at the fact that you had to justify yeah. that the rosary is a man's weapon yeah, when, in yeah, fact, we have sorry, all these women out there. I mean, other men out there who refuse to pray the rosary or go to church because yeah. they think it's a woman's thing. Yeah. And they don't realize yeah. that they're little boys who aren't even men well, in men's <laughs> pants yet. Because they don't yeah. even know what it means to live in life. They're too scared and too yeah. wimpy to go to church because they care what other men think. Are you kidding yeah. me? Are you <laughs> kidding me? You think praying yeah. the... Don't even get me going, but praying the rosary oh, is powerful. Yeah. It's it's like St. Louis de Montfort said, one Hail Mary is the conquering hammer of the devil. I mean, St. Louis de Montfort was a man's man. And I remember some men were making fun of him once after while he was preaching he was up on his soapbox and afterwards he went and knocked all three of those men out afterwards oh, like he knocked one. them yeah. all out because kind of uh man. they were making fun of the blessed virgin mary and he ain't gonna put up with him making fun of his My mama kind of so man. you know what it's it is a man store and we shouldn't have to justify that but unfortunately too many men don't know what it means to be a man today and they don't know what it means to do what's right and to follow god in that way yeah, Sorry. amen. No, you know, Tangent. no, no, like, thank you. No, I love when you I love when you go off. That's why I watch your show. That's why I'm on it. You're leading the way, you're putting out a lot of great stuff, video after video after video, teaching the truth and not being too like, oh, I'm not gonna tell them the truth. I'm just gonna love them where they're at. No, love is willing the good of another, and that's what Brian does. He wants to love them so much that they're gonna turn away from their ways and learn how to be men, learn the truth. And man, I just I really I respect that a lot. And so having a relationship, like back to the Back to this. Once again, guys, please pray it. Try it. Go and find a men's group. I bet you that men's group is praying the rosary before it starts. I go to multiple men's groups that I visit, and they pray it beforehand. Get around other men so they can teach you. If you need to learn an example, remember the rosary was given to St. Dominic first. So it was handed down to a man to use it as a weapon, like Padre Pio says, the weapon of our times. The dragon, the enemy doesn't have nothing on this, man. You slap him around with it in the name of Jesus. You got nothing on you when you're praying your rosary. Pray it every day. And like Taylor Marshall says, if you don't pray the rosary every day, you're not on the team. And that's I like that quote right there, man. He's all right. He's an all right guy. If anybody out there doesn't like, hey, man, that's your guys' choice. I like him. <laughs> Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and praying the rosary is fundamental. Because I'm kind of in the center. That's why, Brian, you know, I'm like this, Michael Lofton and or yeah, I like them both. I love my Catholic brothers. We're the family. I'm about uniting the clans, man. Let's, uh, the devil. When Me we're too. Battling Just with don't go together, into schism, and I won't yeah, have any problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go into schism, and we won't have no problems on both sides. Stop but, talking know, trash like, about the Pope when you're ignorant, and I won't have any problems. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And please, Pope, make things with clarity. Also, we love you, Papa. We're we love you so much. You're our papa, but please make things clear for us. So, so okay. priests like Father James Martin don't do outlandish stuff. Thank you. And so back, back to back to back to praying the rosary because this fun is what we're talking about our faith. That's what leads us to power, not controversy, not all the nonsense, but focusing on Christ, focusing on Mama Mary, and asking for her intercession. We know that Jesus will do anything for his mama. Man, think about it. She probably took care of his boo-boos. She taught him. She taught him the scriptures. Saint Joseph was probably working a lot, you know. She did everything. and taught him how to speak. Taught him how to walk. Was always there for him every time he had a nightmare. So this love that they had for each other, Jesus would do anything for his mom. Anything for his mom reminds me of the wedding at Cana. Remember, even when they, Jesus is saying, "Hey, woman, she wanted the water turned to wine. It's not my time. No, it's not my time to do miracles, but Christ." 
loved his mother so much. He had such a devotion and honor for his mother that what did he do, Brian? He listened to her. her. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. As he they would say in Pirates of the Caribbean, they, he acquiesced her request. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He said yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. No, that's, and you know what that's so awesome is that we see this, how he goes out of his way and he does do that. You know, have that same type of relationship with her where if she asks you something, or you need something asked of Jesus, you can go turn to her and know that she's already in heaven with him. She will come to your need also and intercede to her son, the king. Jesus was a mama's boy. I was never a mama's boy myself. But now I seem to be, I like that term, the Latin, the Latin lover of Our Lady. I've heard that term. Um, Jesse Romero says he drops that one around sometimes. For years, he's been saying that forever. But I'm a mama's boy. I was never a mama's boy in my life. And I had to build this relationship, especially like at one time, guys, I did it. It was my hardest thing as a convert was praying the rosary. That was the hardest thing to be saying Hail Mary all the time. The Marian devotion was the hardest thing for me. But I'll tell you one thing. When I was in prison, I didn't have a rosary. I made one out of a trash bag. So I made a little fake cross. We would we would we would stretch out the plastic and twist it and twist it real fine and then make little balls on it. And then I started praying the rosary, but I noticed that my life, that my that my anxiety, I noticed that my relationship um, with women later on in my life now is completely altered now. Why? Because I have such a loving relationship with my mother and she guides me to respect all people with love and respect. She gave us a weapon through St. Dominic, like I was saying, in 1208 to combat against heresies, false teachers, and the devil. That's what this is for. So the rosary was given to combat. The rosary was given to fight against heresies. Those are doctrines that are with the truth. So anything that's not the de true deposit of faith, which is in Catholicism, is a heresy. So let me just set that ground truth. False teachers and the devil. We must use today for the same reason. And even worse, this is truly, Padre, Seal, Padre Pio said it back then, um, a, a few decades ago. I'm saying it right now. This is the weapon of our times. Our culture needs to start praying the rosary more for the conversion of souls, especially with all the ideologies that we're having out there. The rosary is a weapon to destroy the devil. Powerful Saint prayer. Padre, oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. You got something to say right there, brother? Nope. Powerful prayer. Okay. Amen. The rosary is a sign of coolness. You know, not only do I not only do I wear this one on my neck, but I actually wear one in my my hipster right here. You can leave it hanging out, show where it's at. Why? Because it's also protection. Get it blessed. Like I said, get it blessed by a priest. It becomes a weapon of protection, not just for yourself, but when you're praying the rosary, you're praying. There's you have some inner intentions. But what I like to do is I pray a rosary. A buddy of mine, Mike Galvan, told me about it. So now I add it. You're a part of it. Every rosary has an intention for somebody. So when you're praying the rosary, sometimes you're not just praying for yourself. You're praying for other people. And if you do a rosary of intention, it's a little longer. You write down a list of all the names. Then you pray it with it. The rosary is a powerful weapon to put demons to flight and to keep oneself from sin. If you desire peace in your hearts, in your homes, and in your country, assemble each evening to recite the rosary. Let not even one day pass without saying it. No matter how burdened you may be with many cares and labors, this is Pope Pius IX. So he's saying, pray this powerful weapon every single day. Don't go without doing it. Why? Because if you were praying this weapon, if we have the weapon out and we're protecting ourselves, and then we go one day without praying it, you could give the devil a chance to attack because you've been forming this protection. Or you may go and do something that maybe you were fighting the temptations to, but you could go one day without doing it. Please pray the rosary. The holy rosary and is don't, a powerful weapon. Oh, go for and it. don't just say the rosary. Pray the rosary. Like, pray it. Don't get so into the habit of doing it that you just... I hear people who fly yeah. through the rosary. It's like, yeah. what is it, a race? They don't even think about what yeah. they're saying half the time. Especially... I mean, hail Mary for the sinners with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is for them. Yeah. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now yeah. at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary for the sinners. That's not praying. <laughs> Don't even pray yeah, the yeah, rosary. No. Just stop. No, no, no. That's not praying. Yeah. yeah. Go watch how the saints prayed reverently, meditating deeply on the mysteries, 
Get into it. Yeah. Don't rush it. Even if you say Louis de Montfort, who was the one who knocked all three of those guys out, he said, one Hail Mary, well said, is better and more efficacious than 50, an entire rosary rushed or hurried through. So oh. don't, you know, don't rush through the rosary. It's better to do one decade and make it the best prayer you've ever prayed than to feel yeah. like you have to finish the rosary just because you're scrupulous. And so you rush through it and don't really put much into it. It is so much better to focus on one decade and make it well done and meditate deeply on those mysteries than just to fly through it so you can say, okay, I did it and check my box and I don't feel guilty anymore. I like that. You know what? That's a, you know, that's really awesome because you know what? You do get in those points where, you know what? I at one time in my, in my relationship, praying the rosary, I, I like how you were saying it because you find, you find yourself falling susceptible. So I like that advice. If you can only pray one one decade, pray that one decade, but pray that whole decade. If you got to pray another decade later in the day, because for some reason you can't take 30 minutes to do it, because that's all it takes. All it takes is 30 minutes, maybe a little longer than that. And you can even read the scripture that goes along with each of the mysteries. It really you makes said a difference. 30 minutes or you say 30 minutes or a little longer. I like that. Most people are praying around 15, 12 to 15 minutes, maybe mm. 17. I'm like, now you're, yeah, pump it up. <laughs> yeah yeah learn the mysteries i know some people that don't even like look at the mysteries like no oh yeah I don't even, the rosary oh what are the mysteries not the rosary i don't know i've been praying in my whole life but i've never used the mysteries i'm like what the heck How? i don't even understand yeah. that that doesn't make sense to me our lady so, yeah, i so think the, it was our lady of fatima said that the the mysteries are the lion's share of what the rosary is if you just say the words doesn't do that much the mysteries she said is the the major part of it Amen. And the more you do it, you can remember it. So if you're reading it off of a paper at one time, like you get so familiar if you're praying it every single day, you just you do, you remember the mysteries, the virtues, um, you know, whatever it was, you know, it's so maybe Friday, getting, sorrowful mysteries. Go for it. What was that? We're getting late in the show and we've okay, only gone me, through me, two, so I'm we gonna, gotta fly through these last two. Okay, let's fight through, let's let's fight through these last two. Okay. The Holy Rosary is a weapon. Use it with confidence and you'll be amazed by the results. That's St. Maria Escriva. Now we're talking about this, the left side of the cross, which is one of my favorite parts of the cross. Why? Because I'm a convert, man. I love it. I love that the Lord has saved me and brought me to truth because a lot of years I was blinded. But within the Bible that I already knew, that's where I found truth. That's how I was able to convert through the church fathers. But the Bible was big for me, guys. Read the Bible daily is a Catholic book. Read the Bible. It is a Catholic book. The Bible is a Catholic book. The Bible is a Catholic book. It's a Catholic book. It's ours. We put it together. So yeah, I'm not going to go into the history of it right now, but we have been preserving it. We have been holding it since the apostles on down the line with the scrolls, the Old Testament. We put it all together in around 393 to 405. St. Jerome, the Vulgate, but that's not what we're talking about. We're going to talk about what the Bible does. St. Jerome says this, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Then why is it that we run from the Bible? Why is it that when I try to share the Bible, it's like, oh, no, 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 we don't got to read the Bible. No, no, the Bible's edification. It's edifying because we learn about Jesus Christ. You can actually have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ through reading, a, reading about him in the Bible. You can learn everything about him. It's amazing. I love it. And the more that we know about Christ, the more that we can live in victory. It's a, it's a part of it's a part of our triumph because what does it say? Christ always leads us in, um, I believe it's, um, what is that, Galatians or Ephesians or Philippians? Christ always leads us triumphantly into victory. I just wanted to add that right there, always. So the more that we're looking out for Christ, the more that we're seeking him out, the more that we're sharing about him, the more that he's going to be there for us. Prayer Amen. is how we talk to God. Prayer is how we talk to him, correct? Because uh, I, I, I usually, when I'm doing talks, I'm like, who got the rosary in here? And everybody's like, woo, let me start pulling out. Woo, they got like four or five of them on them, you know? I'm like, don't use your phone. Who got the Bible in here? Maybe like one person. Maybe one person will have it in there. And I, I, I it's, it's important because prayer is how we talk to God. But the Bible is how God talks to us. It's how he, how he speaks to us, how he reveals things to us. The Bible is not meant for it to be a daily bread. I mean, the Bible is meant to be a daily bread, not a cake 
meant for special occasions. Like, why do we just run the Bible when we're hurting? When something's going on or when we got to, oh, I got to learn about something. Let me open up. No, it should be something, our daily bread, remember? And like Peter Cripp says, a Bible that's falling apart is usually owned by somebody that isn't. And my Bible, I got like tape on it. This whole thing's falling apart. The DDK Bible right here. I love it. It's, I'm always in it. I can't stop from being inside. Becoming familiar. It says, um, St. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth says, become so familiar with the Bible so that it can become a compass pointing out the road to follow to. Why? Because it tells us what's wrong. It tells us what's right. It tells us what's the, the narrow road leads to salvation, but the wide road leads to death. It leads to hell, the gnashing of teeth. We know this, but it teaches us what's true, what's false, what kind of character of people to hang out with, what kind of woman or man to date, how we should be as husbands and wives. Salvation in Christ. We have so many beautiful things. The Eucharistic discourse. How do we know about it? John 6. How do we know about the confession? John 20, 21. He, we, the Bible tells us about confession. We see it clear, the sacrament of confession right there. How do we know all these things? How do we know that the sacrament of marriage is a sacrament? The Bible tells us so. That's why whatever God has brought together, let no one separate. When we're reading the Bible, we're reading a Catholic doctrine. We're reading the truth. The deposit of faith that we've been holding for 2,000 years. It is our church. It's beautiful to read the Bible. The Bible is a love letter. I can't remember who quoted this one. Um, but the Bible is a love letter from God. It has each one of your names on it. The more that you read it, the more you get to know him. The more he's going to reveal things to you. And your life's going to open up and you're going to be living a major victory. Also, on the left you side imagine... Of the yeah. Can you imagine if Jesus came up to you and he said, Eric, I want you to have this. And you say, what do you have for me, Lord? And he gives you a handwritten letter. And he says, I wrote this for you. And uh, I want you to read it. And you say, well, what is it? It's a love letter. And also some wisdom in there to help you live life. And you're like, oh, no, thanks, Lord. You know, yeah. take a hike. That's what we're doing when we refuse to read the Bible. We're jail telling Jesus to take a hike. We're telling yeah. them his letter isn't important. His word is not important. And that's what Catholics are telling them yeah. inadvertently because we're saying, oh, yeah. I don't need to read the Bible or I should read the Bible, but I never make time to, which is basically the same thing as it's not important in my life. Reading the Bible and knowing God's word, yeah. what God has to say to us is not important in our lives. And it needs yeah. to be. That's why St. Jerome can say ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. You can't yeah, know amen. Christ without knowing scripture. Amen. 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 All the way. That's then that's 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 the truth. That's the truth all the way right there. Um that's thank you for saying that. And on the left side of the cross, also, um, I talk about doctrine. You got to know your doctrine. Like, please, if you could get into RCIA class, know your Catholic faith. The more that we know our faith, it's one thing to read the Bible. That's it, yeah, praise God. But if you add the doctrine to it, and like so, like when somebody tells you. Why do you ask Mary for intercession? Or why do you call her the Queen Mother? Mama Mary, I mean. Or why do you guys do the communion of saints? Or why? what do you believe about the Eucharist? If you know your faith, then you can answer those questions. And you're not going to feel uncomfortable. And then you can teach your kids that. You can teach your loved ones that, that are around you. Because a lot of our, our loved ones are capitulating away from the faith. And so the more that we can teach them, you're not just learning it for yourself. You're learning it for your family. You're learning it for the ones that are around you. So the top part of the cross, one more time, Brian, was who? Relationship with Jesus Christ, the King. The, the bottom part of the cross, the King. Bottom part of the cross? <laughs> Read your Bible. Oh, bottom Mary. Was, Blessed Virgin Mary, Rosary, 60 yeah. Canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, um, yeah, the bottom of the cross was devotion to Mama Mary, training Rosary, 60 millimeter Canon. Get it. The left side of the cross. Is the reading Bible the Bible, and, scripture, and knowing your faith. And knowing your faith. And so the right side of the cross, we're going to get to the last side of the cross now. We went from left to right now. And so we're going to talk about what the church has been doing for 2,000 years. Something that we veered away from and something that I'm really, that's why I love Brian so much. That's why me and him can see eye to eye because we believe the same thing pretty much. And there's others out there. It's all our duty to evangelize. We've been doing it for 2,000 years. Why have we gone away from it? Why have we veered away from wanting to share the truth of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth still? Why do we think it stopped? And so in Matthew 28, 19, we all know this scripture. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded to you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Within the renewed theology of the laity of Vatican II, there is a rediscovery of the universal call to mission for every, for every, for every, for every member of the church. The laity, according to, I just call it the double A, because I'm not going to try to pronunciate it, have the right and a duty to engage in the apostolate that is evangelization. It is our obligation. This is a document that says this. This is a papal document from Vatican II that says it's our job to do it too. So please, however way you can do it, live your faith out. Live your faith out that you want to lead people away from sin. Live your faith out that you're just loving and you tell people good morning and God bless you in the morning. Maybe people that you know that are Catholics, invite them to Mass if that's what you do. Whatever you do, share it with others. That's the call to evangelization. The world will know who we are by the way that we love one another and we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who has shared Christ with somebody lately? That's that's just a rhetorical question, guys. I, I would ask Brian, but he does it like every second. Um, <laughs> if that's his, that's his call. He's amazing. Yeah, he does. And so think about and that. And not everybody's okay. called to do what I do. You know, not everybody's yeah, no. called to speak to people on the street, to speak to people yeah. at my gym, to call out yeah. the people who are working at the gym <laughs> and ask them how they, you know, like you, he, I was like, you're wearing a cross. Yeah. I was like, do you actually believe and follow Jesus or are you just wearing it as <laughs> jewelry? You know, let's get that conversation started. Yeah, you yeah. know, so Where you at? that's what I'm called to. But um, many people might just be called to talk to someone in their family or to say, Hey, I read yeah. this book. It changed my life. I want you to check it out too. Or, Hey, I heard this talk. It was the best talk in the world. Are you interested? And send it to them by email, send it to them by Facebook, yeah. you know, just yeah. there's different ways to evangelize. You don't have to get up in people's faces. There's, yeah. you can leave books in the bathroom where your kids you know, they're going to be just leave a, a, a basket of books where they're going to be on the john, you know, and let them pick through them when they're there, you know, just different creative yeah, ways that's, to that's a creative teach way people right the faith. Yeah, no, that is, that is a creative way. I like that one right there. Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff. I, I have like I have a buddy right now living with me. He's a brother of mine. He's an Israelite. OK, but inside of inside of there, I have a bunch of Catholic books. So I've noticed him watching Scott Hahn and Tim and with a Trent Horn the other day. I'm like, oh, OK, I'm not I'm not going to say that I noticed that, but I'm going to just we'll just let him continue to read and check it out because we have faith i tell you that but the more you know your faith and you're living it out when you do have those family members or friends that are out there you can evangelize them why because you know the faith already you have a relationship with jesus you have a devotion to mama mary and praying the rosary you know your bible come on somebody you can live in victory evangelization becomes extremely easy when you're doing and it. let me right, let me just say if you don't mind me jumping in that a lot of people yeah, on this brother. channel they do evangelize. And I just give oh, nice. people props on this channel because oh, amen, I know amen. people who have converted to the Catholic Church from, say, yeah. Seventh-day Adventist or Protestant, but then they yeah, send amen. the videos that converted them to their own family members. So they're evangelizing amen. them. They're not getting up in the family oh, and saying, you're beautiful. wrong. They're just saying, yeah. oh, I love this video. Check it out. Or, hey, I heard you had a question. You were asking me a question about uh, Mary the other day, and I didn't really know how to answer it, but I found this video that answers oh, it for me. So yeah. if you're interested, here, check it out. You know, so... You know, people do that. And now I've had so many emails from people saying my whole family is becoming Catholic from Seventh-day Adventist, or my whole wow. family is now starting to go to church, even though they're not Catholic yet, they're coming with me to check it out. And it's all because of your videos or your podcast or your Instagram or whatever. So, you know, keep sharing the faith, guys. It doesn't matter Amen, if you succeed guys, yeah. or not. What matters is you keep trying planting seeds and letting yeah. Jesus do the rest. Yeah, I, li I like how you, I like how you said that. It is just a plan and planting the seeds and doing what you doing what you can do where you're at, and it, yeah, it's it's not easy. It's not the, no. the, the 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 success rate may be low, but I'll tell you one thing: when when it does happen and somebody does that one, if it just if it's just one, that's all that matters is that one soul that we're able to convert and help lead them to Christ. That's what it's all about. Fellowshipping, like so. Okay, so we're talking about evangelization. So now I want to get into the same side of the cross. But it's in, it's extremely important too. You know, it's not just one part. It's all these things. If you're, this is all that I do in my life to live in victory. And so, being involved in fellowship, you know, being a part of a fellowship, a men's ministry, Catholic men's fellowship, maybe like a Knights of Columbus, something like that. But also being a part of parish ministry, like it is vital 
to serve in your parish, especially as men. Quit being and to be wimps, part like, of it. Like Brian would say, quit being wimps. Get out there and start serving in your church. We need to be active. It's what is it for an hour and a half? You got to serve. Really? It's it's really that too much for you? Please, God will honor you and blessings upon your life will be more because God sees what you're doing and graces are being bestowed upon you in those moments right there. You know, Hebrews 1025 says this, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren like is a manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much as more as you see the day approaching here. Why? Because we need each other. It's you can't just go to mass and then leave. Or just go to mass and you're praising the rosary on your own. Or you're having your own relationship. Yeah, praise God. You can have a relationship with God. But we need the brethren. We're the body of Christ. We need the family to edify, to build up, to speak life into us. Or maybe there's something in you that you could speak life into us. And vice versa. Because iron sharpens iron. So it's very extremely important that we have a fellowship relationship. And we're involved in ministry at the parish. That we're serving Christ. Because think about it. You're not serving the church when like, see, that's when I'm a part of El Sembrador or I'm part of Knights of Columbus. That's something outside of the parish. But when I'm actually serving in mass, I'm serving Jesus. So when I'm lecturing or I ushered before, it's like I'm serving the king. So there's a difference. I could serve Knights of Columbus. I understand I'm serving Jesus still over there. But when I'm actually serving within the liturgy, you're serving the king within the liturgy for heaven is all around us at that moment with the Eucharist. And so take it as an honor and a privilege, not like a task or a job. It's an honor and a privilege to serve Jesus. Because think about it. He thought you were an honor and a privilege so much that he died for you on the cross. He was beaten and bruised, scourged at the pillar, all because he thought about your soul, all because he thought about you so much. And so when, when I'm telling you all these things, you may be thinking, oh, Eric, this can kind of be a lot. No. Having a relationship with Jesus, going to Mass, adoration, and understanding with the Eucharist, easy. Bottom of the cross, a relationship and praying the rosary, ask God for strength for you to do it every single day so that you can be consistent. But I promise you, if you're consistent with it, your life's going to start flowing more beautifully. And even if tragedy or something comes around, you'll understand that in praying this rosary, this tragedy or suffering that you're going through, you're going to lift it up to God and you're going to get through it because you're using the weapons on how to get through it. Because Jesus said, never said life was going to be easy. He says, if they hate me or if I've gone through things, you're going to go through stuff too. It's a part of being a Christian is suffering. But if you're utilizing these weapons, like I said, the Eucharist, the rosary, the left side, praying your Bible so you can get that edification. Because he who meditates on the word night and day, it says in Psalms 1, is like a tree planted next to a river that's roots are in the water. And at every season, it produces fruit and it never withers up and dries up. That's how it is also when you're in the word of God every day and you're meditating on it. You're not going to wither up. You're not going to get dried up. When it's time to produce fruit, you're going to produce Amen. fruit. Amen. Amen. And, amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Okay. I'm just, I'm just rounding up. I'm rounding it up right now for you, brother. Every day is an opportunity for you to live a victory. Every day is an opportunity for you to say, okay, God, I'm going to win today. You know, I'm going to keep on talking right now because God, he hears your cries. He hears your calls. Like it says in um, Jeremiah 33, three, it says, call upon the name of the Lord, mighty name of the Lord. And he will show you great, and of fathomable things that your mind cannot even can't even fathom them. Because these things that he wants to bless you with, this anointing that he wants to bless you with in your life, it can come. It's right around the corner. But it's about utilizing your faith so that you can live in victory. Remember, the top of the cross is the Eucharist in Jesus Christ. The bottom of the cross is having a devotion to Mama Mary and praying a rosary daily. The left side of the cross is reading your Bible and knowing your doctrine. Mm. And then the left side of the cross would be evangelization, parish ministry, and fellowship. And I'm telling you, this is easy. The more you live it out, the more you live out our faith, the more you're going to see, man, I never knew I could do this much. Because when we do more for God, I'm telling you, we give God an inch. He's given us smiles. It says, draw close to God and he will draw nearer to you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose. He has created you with a destiny. But you have to realize that. We have to, like, step into our destiny. Like, I could say that, God, I love you. I could say, God, I'm a Christian. God, I need help. But it's like, okay, God, I'm going to pray and say I need help. But I'm also going to live in victory and make sure I'm in mass. And I'm I'm believing in the Eucharist. 
And I'm going to make sure that I'm praying my rosary every single day, not just petitioning that I need certain things in my life, but actually living out my faith so I can activate it or living out, living out what we believe. So it activates your faith. Your faith is activated by living out the sacraments. The sacraments are instruments in the outward sign of God's inward grace. It gives you power. It allows you to say that, you know, I'm not doing this by myself, but are you utilizing these graces every day? Are you utilizing the tools, the weapons and instruments that God has given us so that we can live in victory? It's not hard. It's asking God, you know what, God, what is impossible for man is possible when you have God in your life. And I'm calling out to you, God, because I know you're going to show me great and mighty things and petition to him. Help me to utilize all these different instruments and tools that you've given us, Lord. Help me to live in victory. Um, go for it, but I was just sorry. Amen. Just, oh, I know no, you amen to everything. I heard everything, and everything's an amen. Oh. So oh, okay. I love your passion. I love your fire. I love your zeal. I love the fact that you're mm -hmm. living this. You were saying, you know, that this... These things help us to get through the difficult times. And many Catholics fall when it gets difficult. Many Christians in general. I know you had a huge tragic accident recently. You broke your foot in like 27 different places. And you were like really low. And the only thing that got you through was Christ and grabbing him and holding on to him and doing these things and sticking with them and, you know, not running away from them. And I've gone through many dark times in my spiritual life. And the only thing that gets me through is continuing the prayer, continuing the Bible reading. You have to continue it as if as if you were having the best time of your life with God. I remember this girl came up to me and uh, she was telling me how on fire she is, how Christ changed her life. I said, great. I said, well, just keep praying, keep doing those things, you know, keep having a good spiritual life so that when when the uh, good feelings go away, you'll have really good habits uh, already fostered. And uh, she got mad at me, you know, because she's Aww. like, well, it's not going to go away. She's like, Christ is filling my soul, blah, blah, blah. And then like a year later, it all went away. And she's like, oh, man. And I was like, that's why we have to we have to pray these things in good times and in bad feelings don't matter. We have to yeah. we have to Amen. we have to have this relationship with Christ. We have to we don't Amen. cut corners. When we're in dry yeah. times, we don't mm -hmm. cut corners in dry times. We might not even feel yeah. close to Christ. We might not feel like our prayers are doing anything. It might be, we might be busy in life. We might find it difficult to pray. You don't cut corners. You don't, you don't, if your, yeah. your prayer time is a half an hour, you keep it a half an hour. You don't make it 10 minutes because mm -hmm. you don't have time. You know, if you pray yeah. a rosary every day, oh, well, I'm just going to say a decade every day. No, you keep it unless it's like an emergency and then you get back to it. You know, like. Because it's easy to cut corners and to be lazy and slothful when we don't feel like it. But that's the road to perdition because one laziness leads to another, to another, to another. But if you keep it yeah. and you keep that that discipline, that's the road to success because you stay close to Christ, Amen. whether you feel like it or not, in good times and in bad, in summers and in winters, you're always staying through the course. Hey man, you know what? I, I, I like I like I like how you I like how you said that. No, that was, you you explained that that beautifully right now. Just being consistent and knowing who God is and asking him, hey Lord, help me to be consistent, help me to stay the course, help me to focus on it's so easy for us to get taken off by the things that sometimes happen in the world. But just focusing on him, focusing on his love, focusing on the plan that he has for your life. Yeah, and we can hey, amen, bro. I I I really appreciate you having me on this show today and being able to share what God's doing in my life. Traditional urban Catholic Christian. I should have said it like a hundred more times. I don't know why I didn't say it a hundred more times. People it's all right. It'll be in the link below. Show. Okay. Yeah. So traditional urban Catholic Christian, check me out. If you guys have any, um, if anybody, you guys have any, have any testimonies, come join us. If you have any, um, suggestions, feedback, please. Um, we're doing all this for the glory of God. Only he can take you from the pit of despair into living a new life in Christ. So God bless everybody out there. Love Amen. And thank Love you, too, Eric, for joining us today. And thank you for sharing. Um, I'll link your testimony before, below, your YouTube channel below. And thank you okay. for sharing what you're doing and you're living in real in real time. And uh, thank you thank all you. for sticking through and watching this. I hope it's inspired you. I hope it's given you some tips to, to live your, your spiritual life. Maybe boost it up again if it's been waning. Maybe rekindle re that fire. But um, yeah, this is a new year. Wherever you're at, it's time Do to it. go.
It's time to run. Yeah. It's time to go deep. It's time to stop being lazy. It's time to stop being slothful. It's time to stop saying, oh, I should do this, or I'm going to do this, or I've been meaning to do this. Stop saying that. Just do it. Go deep. Yeah. Jump in and maybe cut back a lot on the social media and those things that actually keep us from doing yeah. the things that we need to do. Um, those would be just a few thoughts off the top of my head. But and honestly, thank you all for watching all right. and God bless you. 